Welcome, here's a Bitcoin update video. Gonna talk about a bunch of different metrics that look really good right now. So I'm gonna build my case and show you guys why I believe that we're pretty much done with the downside here and that we should be heading up towards around 70,000 as the next main move. So gonna cover a bunch of things from the current market structure. Uh, the indicators, gonna talk about the liquidation heat map, liquidity heat map, um, funding rates, open interest, spot premium. So we're gonna go over all of these things and kind of build my case for why I'm expecting a major move to the upside very soon, thinking that we're pretty much done with downside here. And you should, you know, at least see why I'm saying this by the end of this video, I'm gonna cover a bunch of different things that support my idea. Of course, I never know what's gonna happen. I'm just going based off all the data and all the metrics available. And so it's just based on probabilities. Things look really good right now based on all the things I'm about to show you. So you'll see that here in just a sec. Before getting into all of those things, do wanna give a quick shout out to my affiliate exchanges. I have an affiliate with Bitnex Exchange, where they're allowing all customers globally, no VPN, no KYC needed. So if you're geo-blocked, you're not allowed to use a lot of exchanges due to your location. Check out Bitnex Exchange for trading crypto. Also, Bing X Exchange, this one's cool and a bit different because they allow trading of crypto, forex, indices, commodities. They have a bunch of different markets, so check these guys out if you don't trade just crypto, but you want to trade other markets as well. Now, let's get into just the basics to start things out here with analyzing Bitcoin. First of all, what's the basic market structure here on the four hour time frame? Well, over here, this high was broken on this candle's close. And that put us into four hour bullish market structure. So after doing so, we began a pullback and that was the high before this current pullback here. And then this was the low, that was the bullish market structure, which we then broke out of to the upside. So when that happened, we have a new high that begins the next pullback. And then this is the bullish market structure on the four hour to hold on close to maintain four hour bullish market structure. So we've pulled all the way back down to that level and we've now wicked it. What's something we can take a look at with the indicator here? Well, we have a potential bullish divergence here building up on our TCI momentum, but we also have a bullish divergence here on balance of power. So we're coming to the upside while price makes lower lows. Same thing on our TCI momentum indicator here, higher low. So if we get a cross up, confirming the bullish divergence here and maintaining this bullish market structure, that'd be a really good sign that we're ready to go higher. So that's kind of the look here on this chart. And the reason bullish market structure is important is because when you have market structure, it continues in that direction more times than not. So if we're in bearish market structure, it's more likely we're going to go down for another move. If we're in bullish market structure, it's more likely that the trend will continue higher. So just more times than not, based on the probabilities and the historical data, we can say that when price is in a certain market structure, we know that we can favor one side for continuation over the other. And then we can add in all these additional factors to help us um, with getting an even higher chance of being correct about the next move. And so right now we're in bullish structure, so I'm aiming for more upside. And we have just wicked the lows here. We don't want to close below this uh, level. Otherwise, we'd be put into four hour bear structure. But right now, things are looking really good here based on this chart. And we can take a look at some other things that are also looking really good. And why I'm thinking that we're pretty much done with downside here. Maybe we can come down a little bit lower, but I don't think we're going to be coming down all the way down to new lows at 50K or 49K. And so let's start with the liquidation heat map here and talk about what's looking so good here. So just based on this really shorter term, uh, 24 hour chart, we do see that we've taken out all the major liquidity to the downside here. Let's go out to the three day where we've also taken out all the major liquidity. Then we can go out to the weekly. Things start looking even better and better as we go to these higher time frames where we're taking out all the liquidity even up to the week. Now we're going to the month, monthly, taking out all the major liquidity. There's barely anything left to the downside. Let's look at a three month. And three month, same deal. There's almost nothing to the downside. And we can start seeing around 70,000 and just above 70,000, quite a bit of built up here to the upside. So it's kind of acts as a almost a gravitational pull magnet, um, the liquidity here. So 
and then we're six months. So the entire consolidation range here that we've been seeing, it's all on the upside, essentially. We've taken out most to the downside. There's not much left there. Of course, that doesn't mean that we know things won't go lower, um, but I'm just basing it off of what's probabilistic. So what we've done is taken out most of the downside liquidity, built up a lot to the upside. So I think we're very close to being done with this overall consolidation before heading to 70,000 um, and beyond. So quite a lot of build up here. You can go to a year and just see what we're looking at on the year. So we do have some way down here, uh, but I'm not thinking that we are gonna be aiming that low. We have quite a bit to the upside and we're in an overall uptrend. We have weekly bullish structure, four hour bullish structure. So going to be expecting that we're going to be taking out some of that upside liquidity um, more so than expecting that we're going to keep going lower. So that's one of the other reasons that I am thinking that we're going to be seeing some more upside action, uh, maybe not a huge dump to the downside. Of course, I never know what's going to really happen, just basing it off of what's available to me. Um, let's take a look at our liquidity heat map here. We can see that things are pretty scarce here, not a lot of uh, people interested in or uh, getting limit orders filled here. You can see that there was some interest here, we had some fills on this move down. So really not a lot to the upside to hold us down right at this moment. So as we just swept that low of the four hour structure, um, we're kind of at an important inflection point. We wanna be holding that level that we just swept uh, on four hour close. And we can see there's not a lot to the upside to be holding us down as far as the order books go at the moment. And of course this can change rapidly, but it looks like right now that there's gonna be more fills on the bid side. Um, and so expecting that we're gonna be heading to the upside, let's go to the four hour here. There's just a, not a lot to the upside holding us down. And there hasn't been that much interest actually since back here. So there, the last time we saw a real um, heavy amount of sell orders was over here. Um, and they were, some of them were getting filled. Hasn't been a lot of heavy stacking on either side of the equation here. So this isn't really helping us too much other than to just say, okay, well, there's not a lot of overhead here to break through. It's not that strong of, you know, built up walls to the upside here. So that's, that's nice to see um, for, as far as building a more bullish case. Now, let's take a look here at some more data. These are all free, by the way. That was Coin Glass, and now I'm on Velo data. This is all free information, free data you guys can check out. So on this last push down, we saw a flush on open interest, so taking out some longs, which is good. We wanna flush out longs before I move to the upside. You can see that we're in a healthy spot premium here, and then funding is negative. So that's also good. We don't want to be overly uh, aggressive, having super high leverage on longs. We want to flush out those leverage longs um, as that is what helps us get sustainable, healthy moves to the upside, um, not just based on purely leverage longs. We don't want to see our market moving to the upside purely based on leverage longs. Um, that is not healthy and it also opens things up for big flushes to the downside because when you get a cascade effect you know you can be opened up to a bigger flush to the downside if there's a lot of leverage and that's forced to close um, so we don't want to have a big buildup of leverage longs and so with the negative funding the flush on open interest that's a good sign there's not going to be as much built up leverage on the long side to then continue us flushing to the downside okay so that's the kind of um, thing about these you know, the, the open interest, the leverage longs, not wanting them to be too aggressive, um, as it kind of opens us up to more downside and flushes to the downside um, with those liquidation cascades. And so we can also take a look at some of the spot volume here. And so it's been kind of selling off Coinbase, has been overall though buying. So if we just zoom out a bit, you can see that we're kind of on an uptrend here with Coinbase, spot, so we wanna see that the spot buyers are, are strong, right? Um, not, the, not the leveraged positions, but the spot. And so these guys are much less prone to being flushed out because they're in spot positions, they're not on leverage, they're not gonna be forced closed. Um, as far as Binance goes, you know, we are trending down still. So that would be nice to see start shifting to the upside, get those Binance spot buyers, and that could really help send us higher. Um, so. 
that's kind of it for the the data building my case for what's looking good most things point to bullishness so um i have to expect that that's what's going to come here um for the next main move it would be upside continuation um and specifically towards this high over here at around seventy thousand, which is where we had all that built up um liquidity so that's what i'd be looking for for the next main move to the upside um, as far as if we are going to break down on this four hour um, that may open us up to more downside and then you know we can look for some lows to be swept here i'm not too concerned about it right at this moment it's really just there's not a lot down here to be taken and we've already flushed a lot of the open interest so i'm really just leaning bullish right now of course um, we can have a, st a tight stop loss in this area to you know if this does come down there then i was wrong and so it is what it is can't be right all the time so just you know take the loss as i always take losses it's not a problem to be wrong um, it's just kind of how trading goes but just kind of painting a picture for one outcome being more probable than another. So that's it for this video. Don't forget to check out my affiliate links for these exchanges. This one for US customers and others that are geo-blocked, can't use a lot of exchanges, no KYC or VPN needed there. And then for people who wanna trade a variety of markets from commodities, indices, Forex, and crypto, check out Bing X Exchange and I'd appreciate it. Don't forget to subscribe and like the video. YouTube algorithm is helped with the likes and the comments. So if you wanna help it out, please go ahead and comment and like the video. Thank you for watching, but have a great day.